In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Good. Good. I have my co-host here with me. Hmm. Ava Grace. Okay. So, it's uh, Wednesday, March 24, 2021. In the gospel today comes from St. John. We're still continuing our readings of St. John. Chapter 8, verses 31 to 42. Okay? We're not going to read the whole thing. We'll read the first part of this and uh, comment on it. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We were descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say Papa. you will become free? Yes. Oh, what happened? Okay, thank you. Okay. How can you say we... we uh, sorry. Sorry. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered him, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. Many times it's not easy to understand St. John. And this particular gospel reading today is also one of those gospels that require... Uh, a, a very lengthy explanation, but we'll try to cut it down and and uh, concentrate and focus on a few points. So, our Lord was trying to explain here to the Jews the slavery that happens when people do not learn to overcome their sinfulness. But yet, the uh, the um, the Jews could not quite get it because as far as they were concerned they are not they're not enslaved by anyone or by anything by virtue of the fact that they are children of abraham okay so Eva, you got to keep a little quiet because papa's talking okay uh, we were descendants of abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone how can you say you will become free? But the freedom our Lord is talking about here has nothing to do with physical confinement and in slavery. Okay? He was talking about the slavery of sin, which deprives us, deprives you of the proper use of freedom. Okay. The truth will set you free. Jesus is associating freedom, the correct sense of freedom, to truth. This is something that a lot of people nowadays don't understand. They think, especially in the political realm of things, that freedom means to do anything you want to do. That freedom is just a matter of not being under the, um, the underpinnings of a political authority. Okay? Uh, not quite. <laughs> oh, jeez. We're, we're all distracted by this, so you just pay attention, okay? Pay closer attention. Freedom does not mean to say you can do anything you want to do. That is not freedom. John Paul II gave us a very, very good definition, okay? which really encapsulates what freedom is all about. And what does John Paul 
Saint Pope John Paul II say about freedom? Anybody remembers his definition? Hmm? What is that? Anybody remembers his definition? Okay, <laughs> all pointing fingers at each other, huh? Joseph? The right to do what you ought. Very good, right? John Paul II teaches us freedom is to have the right to do what you ought. It's not the right to do anything I want to do. Because not everything you want to do is what you ought to do. And not everything you might want to do is good for you. Okay? So, oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez I'm sorry oh sorry oh sorry I hurt her okay uh, go go to Mina first so put a new band-aid put a new band-aid okay I'm <laughs> sorry okay well let's get back to that okay focus now concentrate <laughs> things that happen okay freedom is not a question of doing only what you want to do that is not freedom. Okay? John Paul says, it is the right, the ability to do what you ought to do. And what is it that is expected of all of us to do? What is the ottery there? The oughtness there? What should we do if we have a choice between doing a good thing and a bad thing. What is it that we are expected to do? Is there anything we're expected to do if we're given a choice <clears throat> between good and bad? Is there? Yes, right? What is that, Joe? To do the right thing. To do what is good. That is what we ought to do. Right? We never have the obligation to do what is bad and what is wrong. Our obligation is always to do what is good. And therefore, what is freedom? Freedom is to have the ability to do what is good. Not the ability to choose what is bad. No. Because freedom really... When you think about it, operates this way in very simple terms. Okay? We are expected to do what is good. That's the expectation of ev from every man, from every woman, from every person to do what is good. Why? Because we were created to do good. We were given the ability of freedom rather not to choose to do good or bad. The freedom aspect, the ability to choose that God has given each and every one of us has to do with choosing the means to attain what is good. Okay? It is more the choice of the proper means to an end. The end being to do what is good. The moment we use that freedom to choose the end and not the means, but the end, and we choose a bad end, we did not anymore use freedom. We actually use license. We actually violated and appropriated unto ourselves the ability to choose a different end. That is licentiousness. That is not freedom. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that. That the real essence of freedom and the ability of choosing as far as human beings are concerned is not so much a choice of bad and evil. It is rather a choice of the proper means to do what we ought to do. 
And that oughtness always has to do with a good end, doing something good. And it is never about having the choice between good and evil. Of course, we have a tendency to water down the understanding of freedom, right? And we think that it is a question of choosing, you know, good or bad. Uh, but in reality, it's not that. If you pay attention to the definition of freedom, it is the right to do what you ought. And what is it that you ought to do? To do the good. Never, you never, you're never expected to do anything bad. No, the expectation from you is to do what is good. That is why it is always a mistake. It is always an error. It is always a failure to end up doing a bad thing. Okay? Because it's not what is expected of you. What is expected of us is to do what is good. And therefore, the right use of freedom is to choose the proper means to attain that good. Okay? That end, which is good and not evil. Now, but when we sin, what do we do? What do we do when we commit sin? When we commit sin, we are choosing a different end a different objective, a different purpose. Instead of choosing God, who is our ultimate end, and for whom we do all the good things that we are expected to do, because all of the good things we're expected to do are supposed to direct us to God. But instead of choosing God, we choose evil. And evil has many faces. Evil has many disguises one of which would be ourselves if we choose ourselves and our own pleasures our own likes our own preferences instead of what god wants us to do then we are not pleasing god and doing the will of god we do what we want to do now we are one of those faces of evil See? Now, of course, sometimes, and then we commit sin related to our own pleasures and our own satisfaction. See? Satisfying our own will, what we want to do. If you recall the gospel commentary yesterday, we were saying, well, the only thing worth doing is to do the will of God. Right? And to please God. But every time we commit sin, we're not doing the will of God. We're not pleasing God. We are pleasing. We are choosing Evil, which has many faces, one of which is choosing ourselves over God, our own ego over God, our own pleasures over God, our own satisfaction over God. Sometimes we choose outright satanic ends, <laughs> murder fornication, adultery, uh, you know, all sorts of other evil ends instead of God. So we are making very bad use of freedom. That's not what freedom is all about. Okay? So every time we choose to sin and not choose God, we are making bad use of freedom. And that is why, what, our, what does our Lord say here? What does our Lord say here? When we choose sin, we are enslaving ourselves. We become captives, chained in shackles of the devil. Because that's what the devil wants to happen to us. The devil wants to chain us and put us in shackles and be his slave. Whereas if we choose God and we choose a righteous life, we become children of God. We act, we are all part of the happy family of God that enjoys the freedom of doing good within the family of God. 
See? Because in the family of God, in the company of God, in the presence of God, there is freedom, there is joy, there is happiness, there is contentment, there is every happiness you can imagine. A foretaste of what heaven is going to be like. But every time we choose to sin, instead of abiding by God, every time we choose sin, the opposite happens. We are actually enslaving ourselves. We are allowing ourselves to be slaves of the devil who only wants us to cater to our pleasures, cater to our desires, cater to our satisfaction, cater only to I, me, myself, and what I want to do. And I don't care what God wants. I don't care what my parents want. I don't care what else is there. I just want to satisfy myself. I just want to do what I want to do. That's the wrong use of freedom. Every time we go that route, we already know we are going down the rabbit hole of hell for ourselves. Right? And that is not freedom at all. So, we have to try to learn to make very good use of freedom. To use this God-given ability to choose, always to choose God as our end, as the objective of everything we do. Okay? Beginning from that, that is the first, the first use of freedom properly. It's always to choose God rather than evil. Okay? Because to choose evil is to choose the absence of goodness. There's nothing good with evil, right? Evil is the absence of good. So any freedom is directed to the good, then it is the wrong use of freedom to choose evil because there's nothing good there. Okay? So the first step in using freedom is always to choose God over the devil, choose God over evil. Now, there are three practical tips here that we can use as to how uh, uh, to, to make good use of freedom okay? and to understand how to make good use of freedom. The first thing is this, never act in haste. Never do things or make decisions in haste. What does that mean? It means you never, you didn't even give a little thought to what you are going to do. You just went ahead and do it. That is many times the, the cause of mistakes and, and bad decisions and errors and sin. It's because you don't think of what you're doing. You just act in haste. There is always merit in pausing a little bit. Stop and think, especially if you're in front of a uh, something unfamiliar or or a temptation or something that you you're not certain about stop think and consider is this good or bad very simple question is this action i'm about to do something i'm thinking about something i feel like doing is it good or bad am i choosing god or the devil okay that's the first thing we need to do. Never act in haste. Number two, never act with a bad motive or a bad intention. Sometimes, coupled to not thinking <laughs> before we act, sometimes we're motivated by hatred. We're motivated by anger. We're motivated by revenge. See? So we have to examine our motivation and ask ourselves, what am I, why am I doing this? What am I really trying to achieve? See, am I just being selfish? Am I just being lazy? I see, am I, do I just want to let my guard down and okay, let's just see what happens to this temptation? <laughs> or and, uh, am I, am I uh, allowing myself to be uh, uh, under the influence of... Uh, other people unnecessarily or in the wrong way? 
Am I just allowing my friendships to get the better of me and dictate upon me rather than me asserting what is good? My associations with other people, my dealings with uh, colleagues at work or my peers, Am I allowing them to just get the better of me or should I be the one to actually control my own environment? Right? So don't act with a bad intention, with a bad motivation. Third, always be mindful of the consequences of your actions. So it's always good to, to ask yourself, if I do this, what can possibly happen? Or if I go that route, what could possibly happen? Okay? Ask yourselves. Play in your mind the consequences of your actions, the possible consequences of your actions. Who will get affected besides myself by doing this or that other thing? What will be affected? What good will it generate or what evil can come about? as a consequence of my actions. Okay? It is always good to think about the possible consequences of your actions. And this is what responsibility is all about. Okay? That is why freedom and responsibility always go together. Right? Freedom and responsibility always go together. Responsibility there has to do with being accountable for your actions. And that's the number three part here that we are commenting about, right? Always think about what consequences your actions might have and be ready. Be ready to be accountable for those actions. That is where your responsibility comes in. If you, if you tell yourself, okay, yeah, I understand what I'm doing, I understand the consequences, and I'm willing to take this upon myself and upon my shoulders. I am being responsible for this action. That's what responsibility is. That you are willing and able to be accountable. So there's no such thing as freedom where there's no responsibility. Okay? So you cannot exercise, so-called exercise, quote-unquote, freedom with impunity. There is always responsibility. Like, you know, you're going to go around with a gun shooting people, for example, and say, ah, I'm free to kill anybody I want. No, <laughs> there are always consequences to that. Right? So that is why doing anything, doing bad things is not freedom and is irresponsible. Okay? Number one, because it's not ordained to what is good. And number two, because you think you're not accountable. So there's no freedom in that action. Freedom is always accompanied by responsibility. They go hand in hand. So let us always be mindful. Let us always be mindful that when you act and when you do things, number one, choose God rather than evil. Right? And then after that, you ask yourselves the three questions or you, you think about these three, these three things. Never act in haste. Never act with a bad intention. And be accountable for your actions. Okay? Freedom and responsibility. Okay, that is it for us. And Ava is already saying goodbye even before I finish. Ah, 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 ah. Say bye-bye now. Oh, don't kick. Okay, well, have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye now. What is that? Okay, oh, <laughs> flying kiss. Okay, have a good day. Let's have mass now. Okay, bye-bye, everyone.